Once again, it's time for someone to tell their story. I can feel it. Time has come now to reveal it. I've been waiting for a long time. Gotta do it. And won't let nothing hold me down. Gotta do it. Because I may not get another chance. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's that time. Our special guest is on her way. for my guests to come in the room. Get, get back and get ready because this young lady is going to bless us today. She has an amazing story. Tell her to join right now. I want to thank you so much for coming in. We are getting ready to invite Miss Bergen D. Williams into the room. Again, it is her time to shine. coming in and joining me. How you doing today, young lady? I'm great. Good to see you. Yes, ma'am. It's good to be seen and not viewed. That's what a lot of people say. Listen, for those of you who don't know, my name is Krista Bodie Smith, and I'm coming to you today for another segment of story time. We have changed the days, and we're moving into an earlier part of the week. We normally do Thursday, so we have to let people know that we're switching it around. My schedule changed. But today, I am so blessed because we have Miss Burgundy Williams out of Atlanta, Atlanta in the house. And we know that you come from a long line of singers and people in the business. And we know you have a powerful story. And one of the things we want to do was allow you the time to tell your story today. So I want to thank you so much for coming in the room and just tell the people a little bit about who is Burgundy Williams. Before she became the singer, who was that little girl Burgundy? Um, the little girl Burgundy's always been the singer. <laughs> Uh, I was the one who um, my uncle was whipping out the camera every holiday um, and be like, sing us a song, baby, sing us a song. You know, that was, that was, that's always been me. I, I've always been, uh, I, always, I used to rock myself to sleep as a, as a kid and sing myself to sleep. Like music has always been like the biggest part of who I am. And honestly, without music, I am a zombie. Wow. Did you dream of being, being a singer? Because you've gone all over the world singing Paris and Korea and all kinds of places. Was this a dream as a little girl? It's my life's dream. It's my life's goal. My life's work is to be able to constantly perform for the rest of my life. Wow. So 
let's talk about how you got here. I know it wasn't always easy. I know it wasn't always, you know, what they say, uh, glamorous. You mm-hmm. did things throughout your life, whether it was medical conditions, uh, homelessness, and you almost nearly died. So talk about that. How did those points in your life, and, and which was the first point that actually motivated you and got you to where you are today? Um, what motivated me, we'll, we'll, we'll start from that part. What motivated me and got me here to this particular point was um, the death of my grandmother. She, I always said that, you know, when I moved to New York, my, music, my, my life will really start. And I spent the majority of the early part of my life really just focusing on family, taking care of family. And before my grandmother died, she's like, go live your life. Cause I had been, you know, taking care of her and being there for her uh, as much as I could. And she was like, well, go live your life now. It's, it's your time. And I'm like, yeah, I don't leave people behind. So it wasn't until she passed that I finally well, it, she passed and I lost my job. But I, I could finally let go of everything that was holding me back and move forward. She died um, December 10th, 2013. I gave myself a year to mourn, get my mind right, get rid of all of my possessions. I sold my car on like January, no, July, uh, like. This, well, one Saturday in July, I sold my car, and on Sunday, I flew. And I never looked back. And then fast forward to 2016, I'm lying in a hospital bed, and the doctors are like, you're dying. I'm like, well, not if you do your job. Uh, and I spent three months in the hospital um, on dialysis. I had this condition where my muscles were deteriorating. And the, the deterioration of those muscles uh, broke my kidneys down, just shut my kidneys down. So I was on dialysis for a while. And just in time for my birthday, my, doc, my um, kidneys started functioning again. And, um, and when I got out, even though I couldn't work at the time, I decided that working was a crutch. And it was a distraction. And if it's not about music, if it's not about being on a stage, if it's not about being in front of a camera, I don't, I don't need it. Wow. So I hear a lot about dialysis. I'm going to talk about that for a moment in case there's somebody who might be going through stuff. People don't really pay attention to their body sometimes. And before I talk about that, I want to commend you on taking care of your grandmother. I'm a caregiver too. And I know what that's like. A lot of people don't realize the sacrifices that go into taking care of a loved one. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's, it's something that people do out of love. They do it because they want to. They do it because they give back to that individual who may have poured into their life. And it's a blessing to be able to do that. So I want to commend you for taking that time out to be there for your grandmother. Thing happening with your body, when you started feeling these signs, um, did you respond to those? Because a lot of times we get so busy, we're so busy taking care of other people that we ignore ourselves. So I want to ask you, did you ignore yourself a little bit and get to that point you think because you were so focused on her? Or do you think it was something that was inevitable and it just was going to happen? If it had well, um, no. I have been dealing with the uh, I've been dealing a small doses with the disorder. I just didn't know. They, the doctors just never knew what it was or what, what was causing it. Um, in like 2000 and nine maybe two no yeah about 2009 i ended up with a smaller um episode of the issue and was hospitalized for like a week and back then she was still alive and it was actually the day after she got out of the hospital from surgery i went in so uh she knew about it but we couldn't figure out what it was. I got treated. I was better. I was released. I was home. And when it happened again uh, in 2016, you know, she had already passed. And I was living, I'm in New York. I live in New York now. So um, it came on. I didn't ignore it. I thought I could. I thought, you know, I was just having muscle cramps or something, you know. So I was treating it with every, every drug, every stretch, every 
every remedy I could think of. And it got to a point where I try to listen to my body all the time because um, I'm very in tune with myself. And it got to a point where I couldn't take any pain pills. No pain pills would help. Um, no soaking in Epsom salt would help. Um, no stretching. No amount of stretching I did. I was working 10-hour days um, on my feet. Plus, you know, walking around New York City, exhausting myself. And I, there was no amount of rest I could get. And one morning, I was laying in bed, and I said, I'm going to die if I stay here. So... You had a change of mindset. Something clicked, and you said, listen, I got to get out of here. Yeah. I had, Because I had tried an Epsom salt bath. I had tried everything. And I was like, okay, something is... This is deeper than what I'm able to fix. Because it got to a point where I could barely walk. It hurt to walk. So... I said, I'm tired of being in pain. And for some reason, my body, my mind was just like, you're gonna, you're not gonna wake up if you if you try to lay, if you try to go to sleep. You're not gonna wake up. So I went to the emergency room and the and in, in the, uh, the Brooklyn VA hospital and they did some blood work and it came back. Uh, a regular CPK, which is a protein in the blood, is around 99 to 100. And mine was so off the charts that they immediately like took me in and was like, by the time I got the numbers, mine were over a million. Wow. Uh, by the time they were able to um, quantify it. It's amazing that whenever we get blood work, I tell people that about cancer, I tell people always go get the CA125. It's about the blood work. A lot of times that you can pinpoint what's wrong when you can't figure it out any other kind of way. Like when mm -hmm. and the other tests don't work, if they draw your blood, they can pinpoint exactly what it is in most conditions. So I'm so happy that you were able to figure that out and address that. And you're feeling fine today? I am. I get tired easily because my muscles are will never be completely healthy. So I I rest a lot. So today I'm tired because I've been doing a lot. And you, I'm sure now you watch the way you eat and you, you make sure that you do certain things to keep yourself energized and you have a different way of life now, I'm sure. Absolutely. Especially since uh, last summer, I had, well, because I can't work out, I, I can't work out like a regular person anymore. Like I, I miss doing. Um, I uh, had gastric sleeve surgery last summer and I'm down 80 pounds. Nice. And so that means I have to watch what I eat. Yes, yes. And watching what you eat, that, that has a lot to do with uh, what a lot of people don't want to do, which is reading the ingredients and knowing what you're putting in your body, like literally knowing how much salt is in it and all the different things. A lot of people don't like to do that. I don't like to do that. I'm trying to do that. I hate it. Yeah, I'm trying to get into it because a lot of times people think losing weight is just about the exercise. Oh, and it's a combo. It's so much more. Well, I'm happy that you were able to get past that. So now, I know that you said another like low time in your life was you went through a homeless period. Tell us about that. Did that happen because you lose your job, or how did that happen? No, actually, um, when I moved to New York, I knew people here, and because we used to we did work together in shows in Atlanta, and you know how people say, "Oh, when you come up, you know, let me know when you come up. Uh, you can come stay with me, look out for you, blah 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 blah." So in the months. Um, Coming up before I moved here, I reached out for, to those people, and some of them ignored my responses. You know how a messenger would tell you when somebody read your response. Sometimes I could see people read it, but they never responded. Some people would say, you know, I'm not able to because I have you know roommates, which was understandable. Um, and some people were like, no. So when I got here, I said, well, I, I came anyway because right. I'm not going to let that. You know, my, my, my existence does not depend on anyone. So I came up here and I figured, oh, it'll be easy. I'll find a job and I'll get a place to stay because I came up with $900. And I was like, I'm going to make this work. And for, I think, two and a half weeks, I stayed in a hostel. And I couldn't find a job. And then I was running out of money. I ran out of money quickly and uh, I reached out to my network and someone said, well, I know a shelter 
um, I will get you in touch with uh, the right information. So I was like, okay, I know this was a possibility. It was a possibility. I am willing to do whatever it takes to get what I what I came here for. So I said, fine. So I went to uh, the shelter in like I think it's Williams Williamsburg, and I went to like the placement place, and they put me in a women's shelter in Brooklyn, and I stayed there for maybe two weeks, uh, job searching every day. If I was a job searching, I was auditioning. Uh, and then from there, I was moved to a veteran shelter in Long Island City where I stayed for a really long time, uh, for months. And then I managed to rent a room and then that fell apart. And I ended up back in the shelter system because I had no one to you know, rely on. And then I ended up with my first apartment I'm going through um, veterans programs and whatnot. I ended up in my first apartment in Brooklyn. And then I got sick. Like, I signed my lease. And within, I signed my lease. And within the week, maybe two days later, I was on the Apollo. Wow. And, then, and, and I won the Apollo in 2015. Nice. And that's a hard and, crowd. Because I'm a New Yorker, so I know that's a hard crowd. The Apollo is not an easy crowd. So how was that experience when you went to the Apollo? Um, the little girl inside me was giddy because that was also like a life dream. You know, it was like, oh, another thing off the checklist. Right. Life is life is good. I'm not I'm not mad at it. And then like two months later, I ended up in the hospital time. Wow. So, but you're a fighter. So apparently, when these things happen, it it ignites something in you and just makes you go even harder. It's like I'm not giving up. I'm not giving in. I'm going to make it through this, and I'm still going to get to my dream. Because I saw on your page that you also went to the X Factor too. Mm -hmm. So it looks like everything that you had on your checklist, you were just checking it off. You mm -hmm. know? So you definitely have that gift. Who was it that told you about that? That you had it like besides your family where was it that you went to sing when you first realized i got something here i never really realized it honestly it was just a hunger i, I still you know like a lot of artists battle with self-doubt and am i good enough for this um why don't they want me do they want me do i have something to offer but my love for music and my love for performing supersedes anything anyone says because I didn't I didn't necessarily have a supportive family okay. you know so everything was be practical be smart get a job go work for the government blah 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 blah, blah. and I did everything everybody wanted me to do what was right and I was miserable wow. because I was living in someone else's skin I was living by the laws and rules of other people's uh expectations and limitations and not my own wow so when i consciously decided to find out who i am without other people's opinions um i it fortified me yes 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 when you decided i'm going to be happy i'm going to do this it's not about nobody else i'm doing what i want to do to make myself happy mm -hmm. regardless that i don't have the support because a lot of time people don't understand burgundy the support is not going to come from those close to you anyway. The no, it is not. It's not going to come from family and friends. It comes mm -hmm. from people that you don't know. I mean, that's the script that they even talk about in the Bible where they say a prophet does not get honor in his own home. I'm sad, but it's true. So let me ask you this. When you were in New York, before you even got to the Apollo and stuff like that, mm -hmm. I saw where you did a live the other day because you were talking about how they shut it down. You can't sing on the streets in New York. You have mm -hmm. Did you used to go and sing on the street and have that experience where the crowd would come around you and you would do your thing on the street years ago? Yes, I have video somewhere on my Instagram where I was busking in Times Square or Central Park. And it I've been told, you know, don't do that, blah blah blah. You know, it's that it's negative, it makes you look bad. <sighs> the no. aesthetic of it, the thought of being so poor, you have to sing on the street. No, um, I got past that because what it gives me is greater than people's perception. Um, I create. I even even on stage when I have my shows, I create moments for people. Uh huh. 
I create uh, musical safe places for people. Safe wow. places for people. Um, I performed one time. I was singing on, on a park bench in Central Park. And I was doing some Disney songs. And this lady stopped with her little girl. And she, she just was mesmerized. The little girl could not move. And she just stared at me. And, wow. and I had like a, a, at that point like a whole circle, semicircle of people were crowded around me or around me um, listening. And there was a dancer who was posing, taking pictures with you know the background of the boulevard and everything. And she says, "Do you mind if I dance?" I said, "Please do." And I'm singing some ballad. I have no idea. And a ballerina was in the circle of the people with me dancing. Wow. I hope I can see that video. I hope you have that on Instagram. I don't have that I'll video. Not everything. I don't have a video of them singing with you, but that I can almost imagine that because, like I said, I'm born and raised from New York, so I know how that atmosphere is. And I know the talent that comes off the street. I mean, look at Just Sam. You saw Just Sam. She won American Idol. You know who I'm talking about, right? So you I don't know, watch from Brooklyn. A year or two ago, she came from the singing on the trains. Mm -hmm. And she went American. I gotta look up. They call her Just Sam. Okay. J U S T Sam. Just Sam started out, her story was she was singing on the trains. And, mm -hmm. and here's the thing she, even after American Idol, she still sings in the subways. Mm -hmm. She loved that. You know, what is it, 42nd Street, 34th Street? You know that atmosphere where you go and they set up like a whole stage and you just stop there and the talent down there underground is amazing. Yes, it is. Oh, my goodness. You go there, you don't even want to get on your train. You know, Gabrielle Sidibane's mother just stopped singing in the subway and that was only because of COVID. Yes. And she thanks. Yes. So have you ever sung down in the subway too? I have. I used to do uh, Union Square, uh, and 14th Street is one of my favorite places on the A-Line, uh -huh. and I would get people mostly, you know, coming from work or whatever, and it it warms my heart when people stop. Yes. Because, you know, to stop a New Yorker is hard. Yes. Because everybody's on the go. Like, everybody's like, get out of my way. Move, move, yes. move. But to see people slow down. Yes. To have people come and sit next to me. Yes. And miss countless trains. To see people relax. New Yorkers don't relax. That's to see funny. people relax. I've had people come up to me and say, you changed the mood of the whole station. Yes. I didn't even know where the sound was coming from, but I had to follow it. Right. Wow. I'm not even on this line. I'm not even going in this direction. I just had to come and see you. Yes. I've had and that's so true because the, 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 the sound bounces off the walls down there. Mm -hmm. So it, the, the echo and the, it's, it, the ambiance is amazing. And it is so true. I have been like 34th Street or somewhere coming from Macy's or something. And you hear mm -hmm. somebody and it's like, I'm supposed to be going to the left, but I'm going to the right because I'm trying to see who is that. And I just want to stand there. Sometimes I give myself enough time to do that because the entertainment is really, really good. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people have started out in the subways in the city, whether it's New York, whether it's Atlanta, your mm -hmm. hometown where you're from, they do the same thing there. And yeah, I don't, don't see it. I don't see it as a shameful thing. I don't. And, and I so had a woman sit beside me and cry. Wow. Just but that happened twice. And she sat with me for probably about 30 minutes. And it was like, can I just give you a hug? I'm like, come on. Wow. So so how did you go from there? And and then you just went one day and you tried out at the Apollo. Tell me about that Apollo experience. Because a lot of people try to get to the Apollo, but they never get there. And how frightening was it when you got out there knowing how hard that crowd is? When you got on the Apollo stage, did you anticipate a problem or was you confident all along? Uh, Apollo is daunting. It's, <laughs> I have, what people probably don't know is I have been on the Apollo stage since 2009, uh, trying. It is not easy to win, um, top dog. 
I've won rounds, you know, because you go through like four rounds. I've won first. I've never had never won first place. I got second place, third place, or I wouldn't place at all. So it was a back and forth, even when I was in Atlanta, because I first auditioned in Atlanta, and then um, subsequent years I would come up and audition or come up and perform. And it wasn't until I moved here that um, Miss Kathy, who is the the head of casting for the talent, was like, "When did you get here?" I, actually, I was singing at Ashford and Simpson Sugar Bar open mic on a Thursday night, and Miss Kathy was sitting in her usual in her seat, um, where she usually sits in her area, and she's like, "Burgundy," and I'm like, "That's Kathy," and she was like, "You know, you're coming back on the show." I was like, "Yes, ma'am," and it took um, a year. It took a year of going back and forth on Apollo stage before I even well, maybe two years before I actually won. Yeah, yeah, it took a year. And I have this lovely keepsake. Oh, nice. Nice. Oh, wow. Okay. That's to say that, you they, know, you I did that it. Or did they do that? Hmm? Did you make that or did they give it to you? No, this is what they hand you on stage when you win. Wow, nice. Now, did that say 10000 Uh-huh. <laughs> and that is... <laughs> imagine winning $10,000 after you... Um, days ago, leave a um, homeless shelter apartment <laughs> and get your first apartment, and then two wow. days later, winning ten thousand dollars. Wow! So what? Wow! What did that feel like? I guess that was like jackpot. You know how people ugly cry on TV, and you think, oh, they're faking. Yeah, I was ugly crying like a mug. <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. So man, and then Burgundy from there. 2018, you went to the UK and you did the X Factor. Mm -hmm. the, how did that go? Because I, you know, let me tell you something. I love those shows like the X Factor, American Idol. I actually went to the American Idol and I was in the audience. Uh, my daughter and I sat like in the second row right next to Sam. I mean, uh, yeah, Simon. And so um, the, the atmosphere, I, I'm thinking that the X Factor atmosphere is probably similar to American Idol, and the lights and the camera is amazing. Oh yes. my goodness, it is absolutely amazing. How was that experience? That was like, that was a definitely a, a better experience than the Apollo because it's a different kind of a feeling. What was that like? Um, so the shooting for X Factor UK took place in Wembley Stadium, which I never would have even imagined myself being in. Um, it seats like uh, what, 20,000 people or something like that. And it was only half full because half of it was for, um, you know, the stage was set up, was for setups or whatnot. And I was at 10,000 people. I don't know. But it was, <laughs> it was, it was, it was awe inspiring. I had never uh, had, well, I've had big crowds, maybe five or 6,000 people, maybe. I had never experienced anything like that. That's like stadium level. It was crazy. Yeah. I, I walked out on stage. Well, I'm nervous up until. I'm always nervous up until I hit a stage. And the moment I took the first step onto the platform, I was just ready. Because in America, I've auditioned for countless shows since there are some of them since their inception. And I never got that far. And to go to the UK, unex unexpectedly get on the show, because I was not trying to, it just happened. Um, it was just beyond me to have... What did you sing? What did you sing there at the UK? Uh, I did Anita, Fra Anita Baker, not Anita Baker, Jesus Christ, Aretha Franklin's Respect. I did two songs, but they only showed one. And... Um, <laughs> to have the entire crowd dancing, up and dancing, and singing. They were out singing me half the time. Y'all didn't even get a chance to see the first song, Aretha song I did. They, the whole stadium was just singing. Wow. It was just crazy. The whole even audience. when I did respect, the whole stadium was still singing. So the first thing you hear on the video, if you go back on YouTube, you'll see me saying, y'all better sing, because they were singing. I was like, well, I don't really need to do this, do I? Because y'all got this down. <laughs> it was so much fun. Wow. And 
seeing Simon, I, 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 I never was able to get that far. And seeing him was just like, oh, my God, I did it. He's right here. And he was so cool. He was so nice. What and did he say? What did he say after you auditioned? What was Simon's reaction to you? Um, my favorite, and I quote, Burgundy, What he says, you you are an example of a hope story, not, not a sob story. And you are proof that with perseverance and hard work, you can – live the life of your dreams or whatever, something, something to that effect. And he, it was so genuine and he was so kind. And the fact that he loved what my work meant a lot because we all know how he is. And now yes, we can. Yes. 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 So yeah, that video is on YouTube. It's on YouTube. Yes. And so I would love for you after we're done to put a link in here so we people can go because I want to go see that too. I want to go see that and see how they were. And I know the other judges were not Howie and them because this was the UK. So these were the right. UK judges. So Simon is the only one that most people know. And I'm sure the other judges were in awe with you too. So we would love to hear you do something. Uh, I would love to have you sing uh a tune that people are familiar with. And then I know because you are a writer and a songwriter and, and that you do all the things, acting and singing, that you have something original that you want to do too. I do have something original. Uh, I try not to perform other people's music on, on the internet because they shut it down. Oh, they shut it down. That's right. Yeah. Well, give us an original song. That's true. I forgot about how Instagram and Facebook act when you yeah. sing somebody else's yeah. stuff. You don't have copyright permission. So you're right about that. So give us an original tune uh, okay. and tell us a little bit about why you wrote it and what the lyrics mean to you before you sing it so we can kind of go along the journey with you. Okay. Um, I, during the quarantine, I was very frustrated. There, you know, there was a lot of civil unrest within the country. Yes. Um, racism was is always rearing its ugly head. And I was just angry and I felt trapped and I had all of these emotions and I didn't know what to do with them and because I was terrified to go outside because I hadn't gone outside in weeks I couldn't you know release the pressure of all of my emotions and I just took pen to paper one day and wrote uh, rage and it goes, you feel this tingle up and down your spine, a vibe. Can't put your finger what's on your mind. It's driving you crazy. Before you break to the next level, before you can elevate yourself, you must release what's inside of you. And I was like, what is it that's plaguing us? Black people are never allowed to be enraged. Mm. Black people are never allowed to truly be angry and expressive. We can, we can only express uh freely happiness joy uh sexualism but our rage that is the one thing that, that's a good point we can't because i think, yes, I think yes. the reason why we can't is because they don't know how to they they don't know how to articulate uh -huh. it without being very negative it scares people because it because the well of of our emotions are so deep that we don't get to express it. And I said, how could I musically put it in a way that is understandable, palatable? Because we always have to be palatable, especially in the industry. Um. And I said, well, as far as myself, what am I feeling? I'm enraged. I'm furious. I'm frustrated. I'm all of these things. And then that's when it hit. It's a rage. That's what these emotions are, are the culmination of all these emotions are. It's rage. And I wrote it and gotten, well, uh, my manager at the time got me in touch with uh, some producers in Brooklyn, and we really put together something I think is really beautiful, and it's a dance tune, house music, and and I think that genre of music lends to release, 
because you can freely move. Yeah, the house music, yes. You can freely move. So I, I figured with that expression, that form of expression, and what I had to say was a great combination. Wow. And that's how I created my debut single, which was, which came out a year ago. Wow. And I also want you to put the link to that here in the comments. You so have comments off. That. Yes. You turn the comments off, so I can't put anything there. I didn't turn the comments off. But it's it's comments off. Instagram has been doing that to people. I didn't do that. You would have to go in and turn your comments on. Uh, and I, if, if I, I go can't do that while I'm on the video, let me see if I can do that from another device. Well, I can't put the link in there. Wow. Yeah, well, well, we'll put it in when I share the video, but I didn't do anything to change the comments, so I wonder how that happened. It was, it's, it's been the, link, the comments have been off since you uh, started the video. That's very interesting. Okay, let me see something. It's the, I, It gives me an option to turn off, turn off commenting, and let me turn it off now. Now let me see, can you comment? Um... Now let me okay try now because I, I I I don't know what that is. Have you followed me? Are you following me? Yeah, I think so. So I don't understand why that's oh, like. No, I'm not. Man, I thought I was. Okay. So you have to be so. Um, so is this a is this a private live where only people that follow you can see? No, it's not a. Pri I have it set up. I don't believe it's set up that way, but while you're getting yourself together, I'm going to use another device and look at that, but it should not be. Okay, uh, the, the comments okay. are on now. I can, I can, I can see. Now, yeah. I, I'm not, I'm, I, I don't know if it will let me, now, if I go to get the link, you can really, will, so will, will I get kicked off the give you, Right, you'll be able to share anything in here. Yes, ma'am. Will I get kicked off the live if I, if I can't, if I go down and if I go to another page and get the link? Well, you don't have to do it right this moment because okay. when I share okay. it, you could do it I when I share the you. video. Okay, yeah. I'll send it to you. Yeah, or what you could do is just if you have a website, you can simply type a website. And then, oh, you know what? Yeah. You can find all things Burgundy at burgundysings.com. There you go. Yeah, and so once you put that in there, then I will definitely do that. And I'm going to go, since you asked me that question, I'm checking my settings on another device right now to see. Okay, so I see that Burgundy Sings. Okay, so I'm going to pin that. So, okay, cool. Thank well, yeah, let's see a little bit of that song because that's really powerful what you shared about how you were enraged. And people do still have a lot of that. They still feel that right now because of everything that's going on. I mean, we are not over nothing with racism or any of that racism yet. Is always going on it never takes a break and when you stay plugged in especially to social media you you see it you experience it through other people more and people are like oh well you know racism is now a big thing it's always been a big thing in our community we just never had the platform to shine a light on it right until social media so it's never a politician is making this happen White people always don't white people. And wherever you go, wherever there's white people, there's racism. It doesn't matter where you go in the world. Even in the UK, I experienced a lot of it. I experienced prejudice. I respect, like, no matter where you go, it's there. Now, where did you enjoy, while you're getting yourself together to sing, I'll ask you this question, where did you enjoy your singing experience the most? Uh, Paris, the UK, the United States, Atlanta, New York. Where did New you York. really enjoy it the most? New York. No place like New York City. I can't imagine living in any other city. Any, um, people are like, oh, you should go overseas. I want to go overseas. I want to work overseas again. I I love being in other cultures, but no matter what, New York is, is my home. I've known I've wanted to live here since I was probably four or five years old. It's not the same, though. It's really changed. It's, I mean, it's, it's nowhere near, but you know, there are a lot of places like what Ashford and Simpson has. I know a couple of people. When you made that video, I said I wanted to share it with you. There's a young man that I know. He has a place 
in Harlem, and there's a young lady that I know. She had the place, and they have they would love for you to come by there. So I really have to make sure I send you the information because one is called the Singers Lounge. Have you been to the Singers Lounge? I've not been to, to the Singers Lounge. Have you heard of it? No. Yeah, you really have to go there. That's really a nice place, and a lot of them act too. Some of these people are professionals, and I mean, so I think it would be a great place for you to go. So I'm gonna okay. make sure I share that with you, and and so. Please do. Because I'm looking to exp expand my circle, a a uh, expand my network, and New York has been such a learning ground for me, a proving ground for me, that I've seen some tremendous singers and beautiful art being established here that really teaches me how to be better, a better me. Well, uh, it's called Singer Space. I, I said Singer's Lounge, but it's the Singer okay. Space. And it's actually, they do it over there off of Broadway. It's uh, 2537 Broadway off of 95th Street. And I went there when I uh, visited New York last, and oh, I had a good time. It's not even a real big place, but the atmosphere is mm -hmm. amazing. And the people that come through there to sing, wow. So you, it's no minimum, it's no cover. But it's a it's a singer's space. I mean, that's what it is. It's a space for singers. And oh, I can't, can't wait. Understand, you understand what the the meaning behind that? It's a space just for singers. You understand what I'm saying? So singers come in there, and you just have to experience it. It's really, really amazing. Well, I'm looking forward to that then. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And D, D. Ambrosio, boy, tell him Crystal Bodie Smith told you about it when you go by there. The pianists that are there, you have musicians, you have songwriters. It's really, really nice. It's culturally diverse, so okay. it's, it's a mixture. All right. Uh, if you like that, you'll get a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and it's really nice. I mean, you get the jazz, you get the blues, you get it all, and I absolutely loved it when I went there. Now, I want to give you the other one, too, because uh, my girl, has a, she has hers up in Harlem. And I'm going to look for that one as well. But go ahead and give us a sign. I'm looking for it on my other device while we're doing that, too. Um, okay. Uh, oh, my device turned off. Let me power the sucker back up. Mm -hmm. Oh, no problem. No problem. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're just tuning in and mm -hmm. when you come back and do the replay, I want you to know that you're listening to Burgundy mm -hmm. Williams. This young lady has overcome many things, but she didn't let her stop her from dreaming. I want to say to you right now, if you're watching this and you have a dream, even though you may go through some hard times, you may go through sickness, you may go through death, you may go through yourself almost dying like this young lady did, but something has to still be alive in you for you to want to keep going. You know, everybody has to understand what their purpose is and they have to want to achieve some things. And this young lady has gone all around the world singing inside and outside of the United States. And that is really admirable. You want to search her on YouTube. If you go to YouTube, you're going to see some experiences she's had in the New York City area on the streets of New York. If you go to YouTube, you're going to see her at the X Factor in the UK with Simon. We all know him, Simon Cowell. And he loved her. So you want to go check that out because she impressed Simon, y'all. So you already know if she did that, is something to listen to. So she's going to give us a little sample whenever she's ready because I know she's getting her music together and we look forward to doing that. And then I want you to tell us a little bit about your acting because I know you did something, you had a major role in a in a movie as well or, or play. I wouldn't say major. <laughs> but, but before I start the song, I will say um, I want to tell people that change your mind, change your life. Where your mind goes, your body follows. And I truly, truly, truly believe in that. And I make it a point where I ingest mostly only positive things, whether it's uh, television or or my people, the people around me, my circle, because my friends are amazing. But change your mind. If you change your mind, your thoughts, your thoughts, your your actions follow your thoughts. So be careful what you think. And be yes. careful what you say. Yes. Because I manifested and worked and got this. My friends made me this plaque of my first single. Oh, wow. 
Oh, that's nice. Oh, look at that. Okay. So this See. is my first single, my, my debut single, Rage, which I'm about to perform right now. Wow. My friends are better than everybody. Wow. <laughs> you got some amazing. That's important. I'm going to tell you something, Burgundy, because a lot of people be hating. So you got some support that really backs you. That's amazing. They helped you to bring your dream to reality. I love it. Mm -hmm. Be careful about focusing on the haters. You can only count the ones that show up. You That's count right. the people that sh show up for you. Celebrate the people that show up for you. If you focus on haters, you'll get stagnant. You'll get depressed. You'll get stressed. You'll be less productive. Haters like are doing their job. Let them do their job. You go do yours. Be great. Yes. Continue yes. in greatness. Yes. And, and be careful who you tell your dreams to because you got dream killers. You can't tell your dream to everybody because some people will talk you out of your dream. So that's important too. Surround yourself with like-minded people and be careful because like minds don't always think alike. And with that, I will start uh, the beginning of my debut single, Rage. Let me turn it up. Can you hear it? You feel this tingle up and down your spine of ice. I, I, I. Can't put your finger on what's on your mind. Drive you crazy, crazy. Before you break to the next level, you must release what's inside you. Before you break to the next level, you must release what's inside of you. It's a rage. It's a rage. It's a rage. It's all right. It's that you step out of the it won't come out. So dig deep inside your quarantine. Find that thing that you've been feeling. Know what it is, what it is. It's a rage. That's right. It's a rage. Yeah, yeah. Come on, come on, come on. Yes, it's a rage. Ah, uh ah, -uh. oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's a rage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to free that thing inside of you. Get mad, do something with it. Don't hold on to it, baby. Let it go, let it go. Free that thing inside of you. Get mad, do something with it. You got to let it out, baby. You got to free that thing inside of you. Get mad, do something with it. It's a vibe. Free that thing inside of you. Get mad, do something with it. Wow. And that's, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. Let me tell you something. I never, right. never spoke to somebody who sang a house music song. I mean, I love house music. When I was in New York, I would go to the garage. I don't know if you know anything about I don't know if you've been there long enough to know about the garage or the Zanzibar in Jersey. Uh -huh. But uh, I love, love, love house music. That is really, really good. I need to get that because I work out to house music. That's I'll when I get to walk in, I walk and work out the house music because it takes me to another place. You know, something, you know, I, I like to listen to old school, but house music really does it for me. And when I'm walking and people looking at me, they probably be like, because I'll be just dancing and I'll be going, I like that. I love, I love how you turned that into a positive. Because you could, when you said rage, I couldn't imagine how it was going to sound. So I think that whoever thought about making a house music. That was genius. That was that me. Was Thank you. 
that yeah, that was really genius because rage, if you would have made it rap, it probably would have been hard. It probably would have been like, you know what I mean? But house music and rage, that it's it's like energy. It's like it's a way to get it out. It's a way to get it off you. You know what I mean? It's like, how do I get this pressure out of me? Mm -hmm. um, anger out of me. So mm -hmm. I think that was really amazing for you to do that and turn it into a, a house music song. Thank you. That's really cool. So you're going to do a whole album? Um, if finances permit in the future, yes. I have my, uh, my follow-up single is coming out. Uh, I'm working on promotion or figuring out how to promote right now because I don't, I'm doing everything on my own and it's a learning, it's a lesson. Everything is a lesson. And I learned a lot of what not to do. And I'm still trying to figure out what to do to get the best results from my music, to get, get it to the most people. It's streaming now on, and downloadable on all streaming platforms. Um, you, Spotify, you, Spotify iTunes, iCloud, Google Music, whatever you use. What's Jay-Z's one, though? Um, the one that sounds like Jay-Z. I have all know, of it. I, I have a hard time streaming. I have so many artists, and I need to add you to it, that I'm trying to stream. I have Apple Music, but I really need to. I'm going to have to get my youngest daughter to show me how to download this stuff because okay. I'll be It's on Apple, too. It's on Apple Music. It's on everything. Everything where you can uh, download music rages wow. there. Wow. Wow. So I really like that. I like that. I can see I can see that playing in the clubs and I can see people dancing to it and just spinning and just really getting getting loose Thank on that. That's that's really, I also, really good. I also have a great video that um I put together and shot during the um during the quarantine on YouTube. Well, I, so what's your YouTube channel? It's Burgundy Williams. Okay, so I'm I'm going and I'm going to add that now. And so, uh, so, so do you love singing more than you love acting? I do. I love singing more than I love acting. Um, but I want to explore that side of me more because I'm trying to not limit myself. Right. Okay. Limitations are what other people put on you. It should never be right. what you put on yourself. Right. So in order to grow and expand, I have to take in new things. And acting is such a personal thing. I didn't realize it until I started taking classes, how personal acting is. And I love it. You found it. Yes, that's, that's my video. Okay. I got to skip the ad. It's giving me an ad for old oh, yeah. well, Honey, these YouTube ads. Okay. Okay. So and I see the other one, too. I see the one uh, in the UK. So I'm going to definitely look at both of these. Wow. Yeah, I can't wait to watch this because I see the one that they've loaded and I see a lot of the views. I love singing shows. So for promotion purposes, you have your press kit? I had an EPK. I am in the uh, process of trying to revamp it and get that uh, updated. Okay. But that's going to be good. And, you know, right now, uh, you said you're trying to find the best way to promote it. I mean, the radio stations and a lot of people online. It so requires money. You have, to, you have to have thousands of dollars for radio promotion. The best I can do with the budget that I do not have is to perform it live. So my goal is for the summer is to get out in the clubs where, music, where house music is still favored and perform. That's good. I think that's good. But I was going to say the radio stations now, a lot of them are online. A lot of DJs are online. And so if you keep doing, I've seen you get on a couple people's interviews and lives. Uh, there's a lot of opportunity there. If you do that, then they'll go ahead and push it. So keep doing that. Keep doing that. Keep Thank going you. the lives. And they'll. And when you do that, I guess it's permissible. And they let you sing. There's a lot of talent shows out here on Instagram now I see. Are you entering those? Uh, off and on. I've had some very upsetting experiences with internet talent shows. So I try to stay clear of those. 
Okay, well, not with the amateurs. I don't mean with the amateurs. I mean, even with the people who supposedly know what they're doing, they recognize talent. Could you have a deal? Those be some of the most upsetting. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? It might be, I don't want to say rigged, but they might, you know. Oh, oh they, they're definitely biased. They're biased, so, you know. But one thing about you, I want to tell you, and you already know this, but I'm going to remind you, your gift is going to make room for you. Because it's already done that. It's already been proven. You've already overcome some major obstacles. And you have so much ahead of you. I'm going to continue to follow you, to continue to watch you. If I hear of something and some places that I think would be good for you to go to, I'll let you know, like I told you about those two places in Manhattan, since I know that you are there in New York City. Mm -hmm. uh, there may be some stuff going on in Queens. I'm going to be coming up to New York. I have stayed away because of the pandemic. I usually am there all the time. Uh, I like to travel a lot. I am in the travel industry, so I do that a lot of time. But New York is my home, so I still come back there quite frequently, even though I won't ever live there again. But there's no place like New York City. Understandable. No place it's like understandable. Like yeah. I don't know what that. You know, but I, I just want to thank you for sharing. I want to ask you about anything that you have upcoming that people can support you. Please make sure that you put the link there so that we can... Uh, we can make sure that people know it because this is going to be shared on different platforms. I have, uh, I have Roku, I have YouTube, I have LinkedIn and Twitter and Facebook. And so it's going to go out to all those places. So people are going to see and hear this. Okay. Uh, I just began over here on Instagram doing a little stuff, but I've been in the entertainment industry for about 30 years and uh, work with Sony in different places. So I recognize GIP when I see them. So that's why I wanted to talk to you because I saw, a little bit about your past and I said oh she's gifted and then I heard you sing I heard you sing and I said oh uh you I love the what you don't just sing you perform and you 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 like you said you you bring people into it you know you take people on a journey when you sing and and when you said that somebody stopped in their tracks on the street I can see why because I heard you sing on a couple people live and uh you definitely have a gift so don't stop doing what you're doing is there any message that you would like to tell anybody now that may watch this and come back that wants to go into the singing industry but they don't quite know how they don't have the support they don't have the family they don't have the friends but they have the desire is there anything that you would tell them if they have the desire and they have a talent they have a voice but they just don't have the support what would you tell them find your community if you're not in it, if you're not getting what you need from the people around you, find your community. Um, I have an amazing support system within my friends in Atlanta, and I have a beautiful community here in New York now that I've literally built from the ground up. And expose yourself to people and places that you don't normally go to. In Atlanta, I was the karaoke queen of Atlanta, okay? I was winning so many competitions that I was banned from competitions. I was kicked out. Uh, wasn't even allowed to come into places because they knew what was going to happen. Um, go in places that allow you to expand your gift. Go in places that, that you're scared of. Mm. Fear mm. doesn't mean you can't do it. Fear just means you haven't gotten used to it. Fear isn't a deterrent. Fear lets you know that you're in a new place, yes. in a new situation, and it's something for you to learn how to operate within. Fear can become power easily. I was scared to death. When I sold my car, my friend was like, why are you still here? I'm like, you know what? She's like, buy your ticket. I'm like, yeah. I bought my ticket and for like the next day and it's not been an easy road, but it's not the journey is part of the destination. Don't be afraid of your journey. Every race is started with a step behind you in order to propel you forward. So don't think, Oh, I'm starting over. Oh, I failed. No, everything is a learning experience. Learn the lesson. And that's what I try to teach my uh, family, my younger family. Learn the lesson so you can move on with your life. 
Ooh, learn the lesson. I always say, Burgundy, that in life you're gonna go through lessons and blessings. You know, some things are gonna hurt. And what you said was powerful about the uh, the journey and the destination. A lot of people think the joy comes from getting to the destination, well, but you have to find joy in the process, and you have to trust the trust process. the process. You trust have to it. trust the process. You can't skip through certain parts of the process you know a lot of people think they're gonna just automatically be successful they want the hookup they want somebody to to put them on you know somebody put me in the game coach no you have to do the work to get there because yes. if you don't do the work you can't cultivate the gift you have to cultivate the gift there's some processing that has to take place there's some things that have to marinate in you there's some issues you have to go through that's going to make you stronger so you can't skip those steps. So everything she said is so true. And being exposed to people uh, is so important. And fear, all fear is, is false evidence appearing real. I'm going to say that again. F-E-A-R. All it is is false evidence appearing real. So make sure that you put yourself in a place around people who are going to support you, that believe in you, be careful who you tell your dream to because they will try to talk you out of it and get away from them people who try to talk you out of it. They are not your people. Not Once necessarily. Not, not really. Because one of my really dear friends, or two of them, actually three of them, who have been on my side since high school, try to talk me out of moving here. Not because they didn't believe I could do it, but because they were afraid that I would be alone. And I've never been alone because even when I came here and they were scared crackless that I was going to be uh, mauled on the streets. <laughs> by, I don't know. But did uh, they try to talk they, you out of your dream? Did they try to talk you out of your dream or did they try to talk you out of moving to New York City? But moving to New York City is also my dream. So, yes. They're like, you know, it's not safe. It's not, you don't, you, you shouldn't do it by yourself. You're by yourself. You should wait and da 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 da. But every day, I was on a phone conference with them. We found, I, I knew that their uh, fears were coming from a good place. It wasn't trying to stop me, it was because they cared so much that they wanted me to be okay. So we developed a communication system that made them and me comfortable with my being here and I, I tell them I'm not sacrificing I'm feeding my future sometimes wow. you have to teach people how to re relate to you even if you've known them for 10 20 years and well, I commend you for that so you were brave that was a brave thing to do because you stepped into a unfamiliar territory uh, people do it all the time. They move to New York City. Some people move to L.A. Same thing. Any any one of those two places, when you step out there, that's a bold move. But if if you dream big, then you you have to go big. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to say that again. If you dream big, you have to go big. And it does mean stepping out on faith, you know? So uh, And even though they tried to kind of talk me out of it, they still supported me. Uh, I didn't have a job for three months. They start. They made me start a GoFundMe, and they contributed as much as they could. And you know, support comes in many different ways. It doesn't always. It's not always monetary. Some someone always being on that phone on the other end of that phone is also support. Don't think, oh, well, they, you know, they didn't give me no money. They're not supporting you. They talking to you. They love you. They're loving on you. They're encouraging you. That's support too. Yes, and some of them might be praying for you, and some of them might be just giving you those words of affirmation, you know, yeah. telling you things you need to hear, and mm -hmm. also critiquing you and telling you the things that you need to work on. Oh, baby, because uh, what I found in New York is there are plenty of critics, but I don't run from it because I have a thing where I take what I can use and I throw away the rest. Yes, yes. There's sometimes, well, a lot of times there's something useful in it. Even yes. if the information is all wrong, sometimes you just learn not to mess with that person no more. Wow. <laughs> there wow. are lessons in everything. You just have to yes. be open to learning them. Yes. 
So I what is one of the biggest critics that you, what is one of the biggest criticism that you heard that you feel as though helped you to grow the most? That I've heard. I have, and I don't, so I don't always look at crit criticism as a bad thing. And I think the word gets a bad rep. I have been critiqued by some of the most amazing and prolific entertainers I've ever met. Um, and what, what I've been told was how to fix my performance, how to graciously accept applause, how to accept um how to how to receive how to receive my audience um i've been shown examples of how to be comfortable with myself on stage and these are people who have been sometimes in the industry for like two three decades um, like Allison Williams, uh, um, this beautiful woman named Karen, who's part of Infinity Band. Uh, yeah, I, I there's so much. I've I've gotten so much. Wow, it's hard to just say one thing because wow. it may How seem like it may How seem like something negative if you're not willing to learn. Yes. How to receive your audience. That mm -hmm. might be one that's really, really good that can really help a lot of people because a lot of people don't know how to read the audience. Mm -hmm. So uh, how easy was it for you to make that adjustment in reading the audience and receiving them and then turning it into what you wanted it to be? Now, reading an audience is what I've been doing for a long time, you give the people what they want. And sometimes if they don't know what they want, you tell them this is what you want. And the good thing about the power of suggestion is when you do this, people agree. Their body language accepts that. Um, I have a method, you know, where I like, especially, <laughs> and I put this to, te to the test when I was in the UK, there were people who bought tickets to my show and stood because, you know, Brits aren't known for their expressionism. <laughs> and looked at me, sat in front of the stage like this. Wow. With the hands crossed? Wow. Arms <laughs> crossed? Wow. And when I tell you, I had them eating out of the palm of my hand by the end of the show. She was laughing, dancing, and singing. Wow. That wow. is reading your audience. That is... Yeah. That is the lesson. That is part of a, one of the many lessons I've learned since I've moved. Well, in life, period. How to bring people where I want them to be. And performing in New York has really enhanced that. Performing with live bands and st has really been an education for me because I didn't perform with live music before till I moved here. Wow. Well, that's amazing. That's really good now, because I know a lot of people probably would have been intimidated by that when you got people standing there with their arms crossed and looking like that. So for you to turn that around, that's amazing. That's I love amazing. it. Please yeah. look at me crazy. Please be angry when you get here, because I'm going to challenge everything. Well, do you talk to your audience when you're performing? God, I don't talk too much. <laughs> OK. So that's good. So you involve them. You get them involved. Well, what is something that you would like to leave in closing comments and tell the people in regards to you, in regards to your mission, your goal, where you see yourself in a couple of years, and what it is that you'd like to do? What do you want to be known for? I've always known my life's purpose, my life's mission, and that is to be the light that people need, to be the to bring joy and happiness. That has always been my purpose in life. And find your purpose. I've always known mine. I've known mine since I was a kid. 
Um, find your purpose. Learn your truth. Live your truth. Living your truth doesn't necessarily mean shitting on the next person because that's not your truth. Because your truth only involves you. Oof. Y'all heard that. And if you listened to my live last night, my guest last night was the founders of Purpose and Resilience. I don't know if you know that, Burgundy, but last night my guests were the founders of an organization called Purpose and Resilience, and they teach people how to find their purpose. And it's funny what you just said, because that's what they talked about last night, and they talked about how it is all about you. Mm -hmm. Many people don't know their purpose because they're so busy uh, taking care of other people, overcompensating for other people, mm -hmm. giving to other people, and they don't take out the time for themselves. So what you just said was so valuable. And I want to yeah, say, say also, also, if you are a performer or a singer, it is even more important. That's true. And it, it may not be um, um, something big. It may be something what you think is small and not popular. But if it's yours, it's yours. Find your joy in the little things so you can receive bigger. Mm. Appreciate where you are. Love yourself where you are to get to where you're going. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like with, with that, once you learn how to do that and what that is, I'm not going to say life's going to get so much easier because that's not true. But you'll learn, you'll be able to handle it a little bit better, a little bit with a little bit more grace, a little bit more acceptance and patience with yourself, and a little less, a lot less lying to yourself. Wow. And uh, in, I don't have any projects right now coming up, but I am working with some amazing singers who are lessons all unto themselves. Uh, on the 25th, I'm singing with um, Emily Sertis at Cafe Wa in the Village. So if you're in New York, come by. Oh. On the 31st, I am at the off. Um, I'm at the Bitter End singing background for the amazing. Pepper Solana, and she's wow. debuting her um, her her EP, and it's amazing. It's crazy. So Emily Sartis on the twenty fifth, she's doing a Rita Franklin um, tribute at Cafe Wa. Wow. Uh, check that out. And on the thirty first, I'm with Pepper Solana, uh, debuting her album at the Bitter End. So these are all legendary places with people who are so deserving, so beautiful, and have so much to offer. So please look them up. Yes. Emily Surtees yes. is E-M-I-L-I-E. Surtees, S-U-R-T-E-E-S. And Peppa Solano, P-E-P-P-E-R. Solano, S-O-L-A-N-A. -A. Um, I am honored to be in the presence of such greatness. Please follow me and find yes. them. You yes. can also find um, most links to everything I have on burgundysings.com. Okay, so on there, you'll see the upcoming shows that you can follow her. You can go see her if you're in the New York area, if you're in New York, New Jersey, anywhere in that area. It's going to be worth the trip. Go check out. If you have an upcoming event and you need a singer, are you available for booking? I am available for private bookings, yes. And, okay. and anything else. Excellent. So there you have it. She would be a great choice. Please go follow her. Go pull her up on YouTube and see what she brings to the table. She has a unique gift, and you definitely won't be disappointed. I want to thank you, Burgundy, for coming and giving me this time. And I sincerely hope that uh, you've enjoyed your time today. I wish yeah. you all the best. I think that uh, you truly are something that people need to be on the lookout for. You're a person that... Uh, you are going to make an impact. You are going to make an impact. When when you step into the room, you're going to bless the people with not just your gift of song, but your presence. So uh, I heard a lot of uh, positive things come out of you today. So I know that you're a positive individual. So keep going, keep going, keep going. Thank I you. know that uh, I will be looking forward to it. When I come to New York, I will be looking you up and seeing if you have a show that time that I'm there and so I can see you in person. And Please. one day I'm gonna be singing background for you. You know, so some that is that is the you. hope. Yeah. So keep doing what you're doing. Thank I you. Can, and send me those names because I wasn't able to write it down. The people you talked about. I will send you I will send you the flyers and the names. Thank you. Thank
Thank you so much. And if you are following this live today, share this live, especially if you are in the industry and you are looking for someone to uh, take care of an event you have coming up. If you're looking for it in the U.S. or out of the U.S., she has a passport ready She's for the stamp. She has the experience. She's already been there. She's been to many, many places from Paris to Korea to U.K., you name it. So she's ready. She's ready for you. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you. It has been story time. Stay tuned for the next episode for the next individual. Share this live. And remember, you have a story. I have a story. We all have a story. And we are here. And it's not just for us. So let's share it. Let's make a difference. I want to say keep hope alive. My name is Krista Bodie Smith. My mission is to stir up the gift, instill hope, and save lives. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Have an amazing day. Thank you for joining. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.